eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition, engine full power, and lift off of NASA Crew A. Go Falcon, go SpaceX, and go NASA. All systems go. After several delays, SpaceX Crew-8 is on their way to the International Space Station. We're tracking their journey that just took off minutes ago. Good evening, I'm Jeremy Skiba. Storm Team Meteorologist John Pasquale will have your forecast first in just a moment. But first, we bring you the latest on the SpaceX launch. If you're just tuning in within the last 10 minutes, Syracuse native Jeanette Epps launching successfully as part of NASA's latest mission to the International Space Station. The weather finally cooperating in Cape Canaveral to allow for tonight's launch. SpaceX Crew 8 was originally set to shoot for the stars this past Friday, but due to unfavorable conditions, the launch kept getting pushed back. Covering it all is News Channel 9's Andrew Donovan. He joins us now live from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Andrew, you've done a lot here at News Channel 9, but what was it like watching the launch right before your very eyes? Well, Jeremy, it was a first for me. I've never been to Cape Canaveral until this very moment. And if you hear sounds behind me, those are sonic booms as pieces of the rocket on purpose fall back to Earth to be reused. We just heard those sonic booms. Um, again, my very first time here. I'm learning as I'm, as I'm witnessing this. It was absolutely incredible to watch that rocket launch into space. Um, unlike anything I've ever seen before, because you can see it so far up. You can follow it all the way up the sky, and it is so bright. It lights up the entire area. It lit up the lawn here at the Kennedy Space Center. It almost feels like Times Square at night where you can, you can see your hands again, even though it's dark because there's just so much light in the area. And to know Jeanette Epps is on board, um, an absolute incredible accomplishment for her. She's been waiting years to get to space, having been assigned to a mission previously and having not been able to go on that mission. Now, finally, after several years and several days of waiting, there was anxiety right until the very minute, knowing how finicky the weather has been. Not not really in Florida. It, it, actually, they're they're looking at the Atlantic Ocean. They're looking at the weather there because what's what's impressive and and safe about these rockets is the crew in the capsule. They can they can break away if something goes wrong with those explosive rockets. They fall into the ocean. The ocean needs to cooperate so they can be retrieved safely. So until they get an all clear on the Atlantic Ocean. They had to wait. Tonight, conditions were perfect. That's great, Andrew. I mean, uh, from the sounds of it, I've seen a launch once before, many moons ago, uh, pun intended. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was amazing to see from, I was probably like 15 miles away, but to have a front row seat like you did, it had to be so moving and incredible, uh, like you said. Um, and you and I know the weather, like you said, they had to be, you know, not just great there in the Cape Canaveral area, but also moving up the eastern seaboard and out in the ocean. Um, so they were unsure about launching the rocket uh, up until minutes before. Is that right, Andrew? I wouldn't say minutes on the weather. I'll get to another issue that may have uh, uh, called things off. But but in terms of the weather, it was only improving as the day and w day went on. Um, about an hour out, they they gave the all clear. The the percentage started uh, about 70 or so percent chance that this would happen, and it improved as the hours went on to about 80 and then 90. So we were starting to get confident in the weather. And I say we. There's a whole collective group of reporters and NASA employees constantly monitoring things to know what the next few. Minutes minutes or hours of, of their lives look like. Of course, with great disappointment when the when the uh, launch is scrubbed. But but in the last 20 minutes or so, they found some sort of crack in the vessel um, that, that they weren't totally alarmed by, but they certainly had to inspect. They actually realized that the crack would would uh, heal itself because the heat from, from liftoff would actually um, help mend that crack, which was a fascinating thing to learn that, that this uh, spaceship can, can heal itself in some way. So that really wasn't a huge concern, but it was the last moment of stress about 15 or so minutes before launch. Andrew, did you get to speak with anybody from the Syracuse area or central New York, uh, you know, in, in the last week that you've been down in Florida and, and what their reaction is like, you know, to this incredible event? 
Well, that's an interview I'm looking forward to bringing everyone tomorrow. One of Jeanette's dear friends who she met through Lemoyne College, Jeanette's alma mater, uh, was here for the launch and had to keep changing her schedule to stay here. Um, I know that she's watching from another uh, viewing area where guests of the astronauts get to stand. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit away from her right now, but I know, having spoken with her, that she's in tears and really had to st strain her, her, her life situation to stay one more day. And I just want to add one thing. Um, this should be a signal to the city of Syracuse and Central New York that anyone can do anything. Central New Yorkers are sometimes hard on themselves, but Jeanette Epps, who says this wasn't easy or natural for her, is going further than most men and women ever have. Born on the south side of Syracuse, Lemoyne educated, a true inspiration for everyone watching from home. Yeah, I'd say a very proud moment here for Central New York, like you're Absolutely. saying there, Andrew. Good, that's, that's amazing. Very, very impressive, to say the least.